Heat pedal to the metal. This is a car driven car race game. It plays so with one to six players. Uh, yes, it plays solo and I mean full solo, not multi-handed because there is a deck of cards that can uh, automatize the movement of several cars, which also means that if you only have two players and you don't want the racetrack to look sad and empty, then you can use four cards controlled by the AI. You can always had some of those. So great flexibility there, you can always have a nice full race if you want, which is of course uh, just more fun. The game comes with uh, four racetracks uh, printed on the two sides of two mounted maps, so I'm showing you the US track here, but you also have one for Italy, then France and Great Britain. Of course the point is that we're gonna go around the track a certain number of laps and the first player uh, to finish uh, to, to cross the finish line will win the game if they are the only player to finish uh, to cross the finish line that round otherwise if multiple players cross the finish line then the player who went uh, the furthest will win the board the track the track is divided into spaces which are these bands here and each space has two spots one spot is always closer to a thicker edge of the racetrack and that is called the race line. It also means that when two cars are next to the same are in the same space and different spots, the one that is closest to the race line counts as being ahead. So just like so. You will play cards to generate the movement value of your cars. Yes, cars can move through one another and when they enter a new space they always go to the available spot that is the closest to the racetrack. If you would end movement where uh, in a space where both spots have been taken then you do bounce back to the next one. Also, if you are ending movement uh, uh, right behind or next to another car, you can exploit the slipstream, which means you move two spaces ahead for free, which is just super sweet. Also, being last, you get a consolation prize, which is you get, if you want, an extra movement point, and also you get an extra cooldown. We will see what that means. These uh, symbols here, you can ignore them for now, they're simply uh, used to regulate the movement, again, of the car cars controlled by the AIs. The AI will control the cars, uh, not controlled by players, those are called legends, and you use these cards here. Very important, one of the most important elements uh, in the game are the corners. The corners have numbers printed there and they can be pretty high. There is a track that has a corner of 10. You're like, is that even a corner? Yes, it is. Some corners are a lot tighter with values of three or even two. You can <laughs> go to the corners uh, at a speed that is higher than that, but then you take a penalty in the form of taking heat. And this is a key mechanic of the game. I'll tell you in a minute what that means. Each player has a personal board, a dashboard, such as this one, with a nice plastic component here that you move up and down as you as you shift gears. Here you place your draw deck, here's where you place your discard pile, and here you have your engine. Uh, on, the, on top of the engine, in the engine area, you will place these heat cards face up at the beginning of the game. When there's a game effect that tells you to take heat, you simply take cards from here and you place them in your discard pile. As you play cards from hand, they will go into your discard pile, so then when you reshuffle the discard pile to make a new draw pile, the heat cards will go back, they'll go, they'll get in your hand. And it will clog your hand. The, discard, the heat cards don't do anything. You cannot discard them as indicated there. You cannot play them. You can only remove them by using cooldown effects. So remember I told you there was a consolation prize for being last in a round, well, I mean for starting movement last? Well, you get a free cooldown, which means if you have a heat card in hand, then you can place it back into your engine. Also, if you are in first gear, you can discard up to three. Uh, you can put back into the engine up to three heat cards and if you are in second gear you can put one heat from hand back 
into the engine. And remember those corners? If you pass a corner with a speed that is equal to or lower than the indicated speed there, you're good. If you pass a corner with a higher speed, then you have to take heat equal to the difference. So if I am passing the corner of level two by moving four spaces, then I take two heat, two heat cards from the engine into my discard pile. And again, uh, they can be annoying. So this is basically the, the general idea when it comes to, to heat cards and cooldowns also. So you start your round with seven cards in hand. Here we go. Each player looks at their cards and they, and they must play a number equal to their current gear. At the beginning of the round also you can go up by one gear or down by one without any penalty or you can go up by two or yank it down by two at the cost of, I think you guessed it, taking some heat from the engine and place it into your, your um, discard pile. So right now, that's a situation I'd be playing two cards. If the cards have a number, that's the number of movement points that they generate. These cards represent stress, so you don't know exactly what you're gonna do under stress. You cannot discard them, you can just get rid of it. You cannot get rid of them, you gotta play them. So right now I must play two cards. So each player will commit to the cards that they play. Suppose these are the two cards that I have decided to play. And I put my hand away for now, and then everybody reveals their cards. If somebody had played a stress card, they need to draw cards from this deck until they reveal a card between value uh, one and four. And then it will replace that stress. So actually, because if that was my hand, then it turns out that my actual movement is nine. The cards will move starting from the card that is in front. Suppose that blue had generated a total amount of six. So they go one, two, three, four, five, six. And they pass that corner there. There's a corner level seven there. And they do it without any problem because they went through it with a six. This card maybe had a five. One, two, three, four, five. I'm green, and so I'm gonna go next. Uh, and remember, didn't I have a nine? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, I got a sleep stream there. Booyah. So that's the general idea of how cars, cars move and how you fuel their movement using, using cards. After everybody moved, people can look at the cards that are still in their hand. They can discard cards into a discard pile if they so wish. Again, with the exception of cards that have that icon there. So you discard cards if you don't like what you have. And then you draw back up to seven. And that's how you reset the next round. So the game... Uh, Oh, now I got some heat here, so that reduces my options for the current round because, again, the heat cards don't do anything. So, there's an idea. You may choose at the beginning of a round to switch gears, so then you play cards accordingly. Cards are revealed, the game effects are resolved, cards are moved, uh, cards are discarded and then draw back. Sometimes your discard becomes your... You know, whatchamacallit, your draw pile. Oh, but what is the, by the way, there is a penalty. You were wondering, okay, heat, uh, you describe it like a penalty. If uh, your heat pile is empty and you would need to pay a penalty for a for a corner, then uh, you, you spin out and of course that will slow you down. There was a penalty, you'll go down to speed one. So just try to avoid that. This is the basic game. You also have some variants. Again, one is to play solo using the legend cards or to integrate the legend cards into the multiplayer game. Another option is to uh, customize your cards. So at the beginning of the game, you will remove some basic cards from the game. And then there is a drafting game in which open drafting game in which players will select these other cards. 
to place in their deck with different effects as you can see I'm not gonna go through all of them but just to tell you that you can change your cars there are game effects that will change the weather and the weather will of course affect the conditions of the race you can play a single game or you can play a tournament with my kids we started a 10 race tournament because that tells you how much we love the game so Oh, oops, spoiler about their conclusions, I guess. Well, since we started talking about that, let's go to the conclusions then. This game is great. It is absolutely great. Production-wise, gameplay-wise, it is absolutely great. It looks great. The boards look amazing. I mean, maybe the cars could be a little bigger. That'd be fine. Maybe the player mass could be a little thicker, but they're weighted down by the cards, so no big deal. And just that little shift token is just a lot of fun to pretend that you're yanking it down dramatically or yanking it up equally dramatically or twice as much. But gameplay, the gameplay is the thing. This game is just excellent because in its simplicity, uh, it really gives you the sense of a flow of a race with a lot of stuff going on, with different decisions happening, with these uh, sudden uh, changes in speed and strategy. And I think that the way that has been uh, hardwired into the deck management mechanic is just remarkable. Deck management and hand management. And I love that because, you know, there are the games, uh, race games, you usually want to have a balance between random elements and strategy. If it's all strategy, then it feels too much like chess. If it's all random, then what is the point of playing a game where I want to be engaged with the decisions? Here the game strikes a really nice balance there between strategy and luck by giving you not die rolls, because die rolls have no memory, but uh, by hands of cards. And so now I'm spending all of my high high uh, level high speed cards which is fine because I'm approaching a corner so I want to prepare my hand for next time so that I have low cards there so I can stay in a high gear and put down a lot of low level cards because if I'm in a high gear and all my cards are four or five I'm probably gonna overshoot the corner bad idea so there is no card that is good or bad really it's all about managing the timing and deciding what we discard and what you keep in hand and what you're gonna keep there uh, for next turn and when to use those uh, and when to use those stress cards that let you draw extra cards because they can be good or bad if you are approaching a corner and you don't know exactly how much how far you're gonna go that's bad but suppose that I kind of remember a lot of my low cards are in the discard pile and so I want to go fast then I play one of those stress cards because I'm hoping to get a good card that I seem to believe is still in my draw pile. Lot of interesting decisions there. And the core engine is so simple. Again, I played it with, with my family. We, we even convinced mom to play. So we play four players, but then most, uh, most, uh, mostly we played it uh, myself and my two kids who are now 10 and 12 and they immediately fell in love with it. Again, we played several times. We started our, our tournament. One of the kids had a little journal and they write down the notes and the little narratives. It's really adorable. And it's great that the game is so customizable. The basic game is good enough. It has all that you need. Um, because sometimes a, a light game is just a really good game. And then it's awesome that you can customize it so much. You can change your cars. You can change the conditions for the track. So basically the same game you could play even with kids that are younger than mine. Or then the same game you can have in a game night with your hardcore friends and add, uh, oh, there is a drafting game. I like that. And you see ping, 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 the gaming antennas like start, you know, Bing, perking up. So uh, there is something for everybody. This is a game that is so flexible and so fun. It has a nice flow. It's almost addictive in, because the turns move so fast. The, the main decision, which potentially means load on the game, which is which cards you're going to play, everybody's taking the decision at the same time which really helps with the pace. And then once the cards are revealed, then the actual speed is determined. It moves as fast as a car race game should, with a real sense of, of dynamism, with a real sense of movement, and to me that is remarkable. 
Heat Pedal to the Metal. This is an exceptionally fun game and one of the best games I played in quite a while. 